amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see Savior ransom me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace The Lord has promised good God, my Savior, ransom me, and like the flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, ransom me, and like the flood, Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me. God, my Savior, ransom me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace. Galatians chapter 5. We're on there. We're going to be preaching on that subject of liberty tonight. Liberty. How many glad your chains are gone tonight? Amen. We have been set free. I asked Brother Randy if he could sing that song. I, I just, I, I like that song and I, I was thinking about that subject of, of liberty. Um, look at Galatians chapter 5. Uh, we're, we're going to look at it several different places, several different verses. Uh, but we're going to talk about this give me liberty. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verse number 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't you notice that? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. So tonight we're going to be preaching on this subject of give me liberty. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we need you tonight. God, I pray that you bless your word. Lord, I pray that you bless the reading of it. I pray that you bless the explaining of it. God, I pray that you bless the preaching of it. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that you would free somebody tonight. God, if there's one here that's in chains of sin, God, I pray that you would free them. Lord, if there's some Christian here that's living uh, under bondage, Lord, addiction or bitterness and unforgiveness, and Lord, I pray that you would free us from these things tonight. God, I pray that you would give us liberty. Uh, give us liberty, God. Help us not to live a life of bondage anymore. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Patrick Henry. He was a, a, a famous American revolutionist. He lived in Virginia. He was against the Stamp Act and many of these things. If Derek, where's Derek at? He, he teaches this history stuff. I get him up here to talk about it a little bit. But he's, he was a famous American uh, revolutionist. And this is what he said. He, he was, he was, it was about the time, it was, uh, about the time that we were going to go to war with England. Uh, they, they had been taxing us and all of these things. And he, he came and he said this. He says, is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? I think a lot of people live that way, don't they? Live lives that are chained just because they don't want to have to do anything that will cause any kind of unrest or unpeace. So he said, if life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery, forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, and this is his famous quote, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. That's the way our country founded. It founded with the idea of liberty. Uh, he also said this, Patrick Henry also said this, he said, liberty, the greatest of all earthly blessings, give us that precious jewel and you may take everything else. You know, that is what our country was founded on. Our country was founded on the idea, the concept of liberty, and specifically on religious liberty. That's what our country founded on. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of scared about the, the, the current state and the current direction of our country, especially when it comes to these subjects. Our religious liberties in America are being eroded every day, and I think we don't, we don't even notice. As Christians, a lot of times we're just letting these things go, and, and, and we're not worried about it almost, but we ought to be. We ought to be on our knees praying because... What our country was founded on, what made our country great, was the religious liberty that we had to worship God, and it's being taken away from us every day. Uh, a recent Supreme Court decision, I think it was actually June 28th of this year, uh, the Supreme Court uh, kicked back out this, 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 this case that was brought before of these pharmacists in Washington State. They were trying to get to where they would not have to, to um, dispense the morning after pill, or the week after pill. This, this is a pill that, that would, would, uh, would cause someone to have, in their, in their mind and in mine also, it causes someone to have an abortion. And they were Christian pharmacists, and they held the belief that they did not want to give that and dispense that to people, but they are being forced, being forced against their will, against their religious freedom, to dispense pills that they feel cause abortion. That happened this week in our Supreme Court. Uh, Judge Alito, he dissented against this. He said this, he's saying basically the court is making them violate their sincere held religious beliefs or get out of the pharmacy business. That's, all the, that's the only choice they have. Their religious liberty is being taken away. And he said this, and I thought this was a great quote. I want you to catch this. He says, if this is a sign of how religious liberty claims, this is one of the chief justices, All right, this is one of the, our, our Supreme Court justices, he said this, he says, if this is a sign of how religious liberty claims will be treated in the years ahead, those who value religious freedom have cause for great concern. That's what one of our Supreme Court justices said. And I agree with him. It's getting, it's getting scary out there. It's dangerous. I, I believe that if, if the, 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 the position, the, the, the way that we are going continues, uh, that we are, as a country we're going to be in some trouble. As Christians in this country, I think we're going to be in some trouble. Um, you know, I am proud to be an American. I really am. I am. I, I'm grateful that I was born in America. I'm proud to be American. Uh, but I'm not so proud of some of the things that's going on lately. This is not even the gist of my message, but you know, over the last eight years, um, our current president has taken us in a direction away from God, an anti-God, anti-Christian direction that is very scary. Uh, I, I think if you would have said some of the things, the way that our country would be, uh, you, you, you said this eight years ago, it would have been shocked. And people are thinking that that's just something that, that just happened. No, I think it's been a planned thing. I think he would be proud of that. And I, I think it's scary for us as Christians. Um, but let me tell you this, and this is, this is where my message is going. I am proud to be an American, but this is not my primary allegiance. I am a pilgrim passing through. My allegiance is to Jesus and to His kingdom and the kingdom of God. That is where my allegiance lies. I'm American. I'll never denounce that. I'm, I'm here for the long haul. You know? I am. I'm not leaving the country no matter who gets elected. But I, I'm here. I'm an American. But I am first and foremost a Christian. Our liberties might, not, might be being taken away here, we, we might think. But our true liberty as a Christian 
is not dependent upon our government. You know what? Our true liberty is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is no one that can take that away. They can put us in jail. They can, they can take away our rights to say things and all of that. But they can never take Jesus out of my heart. That is where my true liberty comes from. And we need to be proud of that. And, 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 and the scary thought, and maybe we need this. You know, throughout the ages, it's persecution that has purified and made stronger the faith. And sometimes that might, that might be the case. I think as Americans, we got a little lazy. We got a little casual, didn't we? And sometimes we're just going to take a little persecution. A little, somebody trying to take a little something away from us for us to realize what we have. But we have liberty. So tonight I want to preach on this subject in Galatians chapter number 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Uh, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about some things that bind us and some things that set us free. So let's look first of all at some things that bind us. What is it that binds us? What is it that keeps us bound? Well, the first thing that we see that keeps us bound is sin binds us. You know, sin binds us. Look at, look at uh, Proverbs, if you will. I mean, we're gonna, it's going to be kind of a Bible study. We're going to look at a lot of verses. So Proverbs chapter 5. Look at verse, we'll start in verse 21. It says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. How many of you know that's a scary thought? God knows. Hey, you might think you're getting away with it, but God knows. Notice what verse 22 says. It says, His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of of this sin. We, uh, sin, the Bible says sin literally takes cords. It's like a chain that chains us in. You know, some will falsely say, some will falsely teach, some falsely believe that true liberty, true freedom, being able to do whatever you want to do. It's, a, it's the idea of, of you can do whatever you desire, whatever your flesh wants. That's freedom. That's what a lot of people will try and tell you. They say that sexually you can do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. That's freedom. Sexual freedom. Well, let me tell you something. That's not freedom. That's addiction. Hey, people will say that with drugs. If I can do this or that, I need freedom. You know, we've got a lot going around about pot in our country and being able to freely smoke pot. And that, that's freedom. I need freedom to do that. Well, let me tell you something. It addicts you. That's not freedom. Uh, that, that's, that's a false freedom. Hey, you know, we, we live in a society that thinks that, that, that sin is what brings freedom. But actually, the Bible teaches, rightly teaches, that, the, that, that sin enslaves us. Hey, this sin, sin addicts us. Look at Romans chapter 6 with me. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, in verse number 20, it says, For when ye were the servants of sin. You know what that's literally talking about? It's talking about the slaves of it. Hey, let me tell you something. Listen, if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a slave to sin. It has addicted you. It has got you in bonds. It's got you in chains. You have no real liberty because sin has bound you up. You know, and, and, and some falsely teach that it's a, it, a sin is true freedom, but the Bible rightly teaches that it enslaves us. And what is the end of this? Look at Romans chapter 6. We're in verse, uh, verse number 21 there. It says, you were free from the right... Uh, what fruit had you then in those things wherever you are now ashamed? What does it say? It says, for the end of those things is what? It is death. Look at verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. Hey, look at, look at James chapter 1. We're studying this in our, our camp devotions. I remember us going over this verse in James chapter 1. Look at verse number 14. It says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, what is the end of it? It bringeth forth death. You know, a lot of the people in this world want to preach and teach that, that sin is what freedom is. But let me tell you something. Sin is what bondage is. Sin is what brings death. We need to know that sin binds us. Proverbs 14, 12 says there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hey, that's, that's the, the, the destruction that is going to come. Sin will bind you. It will drag you down. It, it will addict you. So sin binds us. A second thing that binds us is bitterness and unforgiveness will bind us. Turn, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12 with me. Look at verse 15. It says, Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. In Acts chapter 8, verse 23, you don't need to turn over there, but, but it, it talks about the gall of bitterness and the bond 
of iniquity. And I'll tell you, there are some people that are in the gall of bitterness. They are, they are bound by bitterness, by unforgiveness in their spirits. You know, this world will falsely teach you, some falsely teach you, that, that, that by holding a grudge or by holding others, that you're holding other people captive by not forgiving them. But what does the Bible rightly teach us? It teaches us that really you're the one that's enslaved when you're bitter. You're the one that's enslaved when you have unforgiveness in your heart. Look at Matthew chapter 6 with me. Jesus said this in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He said in, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 14. He says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But notice verse 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What a scary thought. You know, we think that we're holding other people captive because I'm mad at them, I'm not going to forgive them. You don't know what they did to me, I'm never going to let them, I'm going to never let them live this down. I'm never going to let them go from this bondage. I've got them held captive. We think we're holding them captive. But the Bible teaches us something different. It teaches us that we don't have forgiveness. It teaches us that we are held captive because we have that unforgiveness, that bitterness in our heart. And let me tell you, that first one, it talked about a lot of sin for sinners that aren't saved, but there's a lot of Christians that are held under this bondage, aren't they? Because they, they refuse to forgive others. Hey, don't be held in the, this bondage of forgiveness. So what's the end of this? Well, look at Hebrews again where we were. Hebrews chapter 12. So we see there are some that falsely teach that by holding others captive, by not forgiving them, uh, that you, you, you're holding them captive. But the Bible rightly teaches that you're the one that's held captive. What's the end of it? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up, what does it do? Trouble you. It's not the person you're holding it against, it's troubling you. And what does it say? And, look, and many be defiled. Let me tell you what bitterness does. It holds you captive, it troubles you. How many of you stayed up at nights because you've got some bitterness before? Hey, you, you, you've been angry at somebody and you've not been able to forgive them. And it's just burned up, troubled you. And you know this, listen to me, you know this. It affects all the other relationships in your life too, doesn't it? Hey, maybe you're not mad or angry at your wife, but that relationship with your wife isn't the same because you've got unforgiveness, you've got bitterness towards somebody else. Hey, we need to be careful about that, don't we? We don't need to hold on. We don't need to let this bind us. We let bitterness bind us. That's a tool of the devil. So we see sin binds us. We see that bitterness binds us. Number three, religion can bind us. Look back at Galatians, our text. Galatians chapter 5. Let's start in chapter 4. Look at verse number 9. He says, but now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. We've been studying this passage, this, this book in our, our Sunday school. We're, I, I love it. And they, they were fighting against these people that came in preaching you had to be circumcised. You had to have religion in order to be saved. But what does he say in chapter 5, verse 1? He says, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hey, listen, religion can bind you. You know, there are some that falsely believe, that falsely teach that religion, that good works, is the way that we are to get to God. It's the way to true freedom, spiritual freedom. If I'm a good person, I'll have... Spiritual freedom. If I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a, a religious person, if I go to church, that's what it'll, that's what I'll do. If I get baptized, if I do the communion, that's what I need in order to have real freedom. But that's not what the Bible teaches. You know what the Bible teaches? The Bible rightly teaches that religion is no more than a yoke. And that's what it compares it to. It, 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 in Acts chapter 15, it's a yoke. It's something that you put on to bind to somebody. It's, 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 it's a heavy burden on us. And the Bible teaches that's, that's, not, that's not the way to spiritual freedom. What is the end of this? What is the end of religion binding us? Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells us. Look at Matthew chapter 7 with me. Look at verse number 22. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not prophesied in thy name. They're, doing, they're going to church. They're prophesying, going to church. 
And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wondrous works. That sounds like a religious crowd right there, doesn't it? Are you with me? That sounds like a religious crowd. But what, what does Jesus say to them? Hey, if this is what you're, if this is what you're counting on to have stru, uh, true spiritual liberty, what did Jesus say to them? And, when, and then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Hey, you know what it ends in? This, this yoke, this bondage of religion, departing from Jesus forever in eternity of hell. That's what it ends in. So don't count on these things. These things are nothing more than bondage. They bind you. Now, can I give you an extra one? This is just a side note. Something else the Bible teaches that binds you? Debt. I'm just going to throw this one out there, and we're going to move on to the rest of it, all right? But debt binds you. Proverbs 22, 7 says the borrower is servant, slave to the lender. That's what it says. You know, in Romans chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Owe no man anything. Debt binds us. That's not part of the message. That was a freebie, okay? All right. So we see these things that bind us, right? We see sin binds us. We see bitterness binds us. We see religion can bind us. But what can set us free? Isn't that what we really want to know? Isn't that what we really need? It's something to set us free from this. How do you feel like you got chains on you sometime, man? I want to be set free. Well, what sets us free? Number one, find it here in our, our text, Galatians chapter 5. Turn over there with me. Number one, the Son sets us free. Look at it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith who has made us free? Christ has made us free. John 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 36. You probably all know this verse, John 8, 36. It says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free Indeed, let me tell you what we need. What will, what, what, what will release us from the bondage of our sin? What will release us from the bondage of bitterness? It's, no, it's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's salvation by grace through faith alone, not by your works. That's the only thing that can set you free is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to true liberty is through the person and work of the cross of Calvary. That's it, through the Lord Jesus Christ. He, you don't want to say the wages of sin is death. He took our death. The only way we can pay that off, the only way we can be set free, is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus frees us. It frees us from sin. He took our punishment. Aren't you glad about that? Hey, it frees us from religion. We don't need the religion. We can have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can free us from bitterness because He forgave us. We can freely forgive others. He can free us. The Son sets us free. Hey, if you're here tonight and you're living in bondage of sin, you don't have to. You don't have to. Jesus is ready. He is wanting to take those chains off of you. He'll take them off. He'll save you. He'll set you free from that sin. The Son sets us free. You know, another thing that sets us free is the Scriptures set us free. I want you to look at this verse. This is the verse that really got me going on this, this subject this week. I was reading it in my personal devotions in Psalm chapter 119. The Scriptures will set us free. Look at verse number 45. I like this verse. I've never seen this verse in the way that I saw it this week. You know, when you're reading Psalm 119, it's got a lot of verses in it, right? So some of them just sort of blend together when you read through it. I mean, maybe I'm the only one like that. But, but this one jumped out at me this week. He says, and I will walk at... What does it say? Y'all with me? Psalm 119, verse 45. And I will walk at liberty. Why? For I seek thy precepts. Seeking the Word of God, living by the Word of God, brings liberty. <laughs> now, the, the world's going to try and teach you the opposite of that, isn't it? The world is going to try and teach you this about the Bible. It's going to try and teach you this book, it's archaic. It, it, it's, it's old. It's, it's out of step. It's, 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 it's out of date. You know, the, some of those things in there, that, that's not meant for us today. That was what they believed back then, maybe, but that's not what... We, we, We've progressed past all that, you know. We're, we're smarter than that now. We've, we, we're more cultured. You know, this, this book, they'll, they'll say it's out of, out of step with the, the current culture. It's out of step with modern society. You know, it doesn't teach the things that we teach today. and Therefore, it, it must be wrong. Well, let me ask you, 
How is this current culture, this modern society, faring? I mean, let's look at it. How's it going, you know? We have terrorist attacks. We have homes breaking up and splitting up. We have all kinds of wickedness going on in our country that's supposed to be one of the greatest countries on earth, right? How is it going? Well, let me tell you something. They're not living by the book anymore. That's the reason we don't have liberty. We're not living by the book. The book frees us. Hey, if we live within the bounds of this book, we have freedom. We have liberty. I, it said that we have liberty because I seek thy precepts. You know, God created this world. I believe that. Don't you? And He gave us a book about how to live in it. He made it. He made the world. He made us. He made us for a purpose. And He gave us a book about how to live in it. And how many people really take that to heart and do it? The Scriptures will free us. So the Son sets us free. The Scriptures set us free. The Spirit sets us free. Hey, you know, in, in, in Corinthians, in chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hey, we can have liberty because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Uh, Galatians, we're in Galatians chapter 5. Turn over just a, a little bit. In Galatians chapter 5, look at verse number 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have freedom because we can live in the Spirit. In verse number 19, it talks about when you walk according to the flesh. You, you, you're, when you walk according to the flesh, you're in the bondage of all of these things, this adultery, fornication, these works of the flesh, wrath, strife, seditions, uh, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. We see that we, we, we all around us. But why? It's because people are walking according to the flesh. But what can we do? Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. How many of you, that sounds like a good thing? Those sound like some good qualities, don't they? Doesn't that sound like freedom? Doesn't that sound like liberty? Isn't that the kind of life you want? A life of love, a life of peace, a life of joy. Isn't that good? You know why you get it? You get it through the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. The Spirit gives us liberty. Hey, you know, uh, I, uh, these people in Galatians were trying to live according to the flesh and, and trying to please uh, God through religion and these things. Let me tell you something. You'll never do that. You'll never please God through religion. The only way to have this is to allow the Holy Spirit of God to do it through you. He can set you free. Chapter 8 of Romans. Turn back to Romans chapter 8 with me. I don't know if we'll get to all this, but look at Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We're set free. Uh, look at verse number 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Spirit, capital, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. What is it that sets us free? What is it that sets us free from sin? What is it that frees us to live for God? It's the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. That is what sets us free. Hey, listen, you have a choice. You, as a Christian, you have a choice to live according to your flesh or according to your spirit. And if you want to live a life of liberty, a life of freedom, you want to live a life of love, joy, peace, those things, then you must give in to the Spirit and not the flesh. He frees us. I want you to notice another verse in, in this, and we're about done. Look at verse number 21. It says in verse 21, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. What is that bondage of corruption talking about? I believe it's talking about this, this earthly condition that we have. Uh, next year, I'll be turning 40. Oh, my. <laughs> my back's hurting a little bit today. <laughs> Just thinking about it. But how many of you know that we, we have an earthly condition? Bondage of corruption. It's, it's, the, it's the case with all of us. We're all going down that path of corruption. We're getting, we're getting worse. <laughs> but notice what it says. He says, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the 
glorious, what does it say? Liberty of the children of God. What's that talking about? Heaven. One day, we're going to be delivered from this bondage of corruption. And we'll have that glorious liberty. Hey, no more aches, no more pains, no more heartaches, no more saying goodbye. We'll, be, we'll have that glorious liberty forever. That's the ultimate freedom we'll have one day. And it's all because of the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us. He's going to carry us into that. Let me say this. This bondage of corruption we're living here on earth, nothing compared to hell forever. But you don't have to do that. You can be set free because He's promised us a glorious liberty. Last thing. So the Son sets us free. The Scriptures set us free. The Spirit sets us free. But serving God and others sets us free. Look back at our, our, our text, Galatians chapter 5. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16 talks about how we are freed to serve God. That's what it says. In, in, in Romans chapter 6, we're reading down through there. Romans chapter 6, verse 21, it says that we were the servants of sin. But what have we been set free to do? So we have been set free to be the servant of God. And notice what it says here in, in Galatians. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And so this passage is talking about our freedom, our liberty we have in Christ. Look at verse number 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Why have you been called unto liberty? So that I can do what I want to do, so I can sin, so I can live that way. No. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but what? But by love, serve one another. Hey, you know what really sets us free? Serving others. You know, living a life that is all about you is not freedom at all. That's what a lot of people try and do. They, they think if I can just, if I, if I can have a lot of money, if I can have a lot of vacations, if I can have this and that, then I'll have real freedom. Well, let me tell you something. You won't be happy in that. Freedom comes from serving God and serving others. Hey, freedom is being able to, to, to freely to, to love and to serve others without expecting anything in return. That's what Jesus did and that's what we should do. Freedom is the ability to fulfill God's will with your life, to know His plan, to serve Him with your life. That, to do what God has created you to do, that is freedom. That is what you need. So we see these things that set us free. So in conclusion, I have, I have a question for you. Are you living in liberty today? Are you in bondage? Do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever been forgiven of your sins and set free from that bondage of sin and corruption and eventually death and after that eternal hell? Have you been set free from that? Are you living in the addiction to sin today? Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you've been saved. But you've got an addiction in your life. You've got some sin that's holding you down. Some sin that's weighing on you each and every day. Hey, you don't have to. You can be set free from that. Hey, maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you're not. But you have some bitterness. Somebody you've not forgiven. You have a relationship that's torn. And it's holding you in bondage. And you know it. You don't have to be. You can be set free tonight. With every head bowed, every eye closed, our musicians are coming to play. I'll give you a time of invitation.